Julie Ryan, noted psychic and medical intuitive, is ready to answer your personal questions, even those you never knew you could ask. For more than 20 years, as she's developed and refined her intuitive skills, Julie used her knowledge as a successful inventor and businesswoman to help others. Now, she wants to help you grow, heal, and get the answers you've been longing to hear. Do you have a question for someone who's transitioned? Do you have a medical issue? What about your pet's health or behavior? Perhaps you have a loved one who's close to death and you'd like to know what's happening. Are you on the path to fulfill your life's purpose? No matter where you are in the world, take a journey to the other side and ask Julie Ryan. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ask Julie Ryan Show. I'm Julie, your host, and I'm so delighted you could join us this week. My intention in doing this show is to provide information, insight, and comfort to people all around the world by helping to answer life's unanswerable questions. We have several callers on hold already, and it'll be fun to see what their questions are. And uh, what's going on here in Sweet Home, Alabama? Nothing too super exciting. Just uh, the leaves are starting to turn. My camellias are in bloom, which is fun. And, uh, you know, it's still pretty good. I went for my walk this morning with a T-shirt and shorts on. So uh, chilling down a little bit into the 50s and 60s at night, but really gorgeous and sunny and in the low low to mid-70s during the day. So it's pretty hard to beat Alabama weather, you guys. So I hope everything's going well wherever you are. And let's go ahead and go to the phone. And I believe our first caller is Arian. And let me see. Hi there. Arian, are you with us? Hi, can you hear me? I can. How are you, girl? Okay, great. Great. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to hear from you. Good to be here. Thank you. Please tell everybody where you're calling from. Hi, I live in Santa Monica, California, which um, we might have the best weather. I know you think Alabama does, but I don't know. (laughs) Santa Monica gives you a run for your money. (laughs) Yeah, I don't don't have the strand with the palm trees like you do. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty nice where you are. You you, yeah. uh, you know, it, it can get cold in LA. I mean, I've been at the Hollywood Bowl with a winter coat on before, and yes, in uh, yes. in August or September at night. But yes, it's uh, it gets chilly. But you don't get although you don't get much of that white stuff. Although, gosh, what year was that? Probably in the mid '80s when I lived there, we got snow. It was just oh, bizarre. We got du- a dusting of snow in Westlake Village. Oh, my God, that's crazy. Crazy. I don't know that they got it at the beach, but we got Got it. And, you know, and it lasted about 20 minutes or something. But, you know, every once in a while, like up in Valencia and some of those areas, there'll be snow close into L.A. But certainly you can see the snow in the wintertime on the mountains Mm -hmm. surrounding L.A. That's fine. Well, good. Well, do you have a question for me this evening? I do, Julie. I um, I I have mold in my apartment, and I mm-hmm. don't know where it's coming. That's been affecting my health. Um, mm-hmm. that I realized through um talking with you that, and I feel, and I, I so I would love to your support in narrowing down where this mold is coming from, so that I can take okay. care of it. Okay. All right. Yeah, we did a private session. What two weeks ago, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, something like that. Okay. And um, that was really fun. I, it was, I enjoyed having, having you for a whole hour. Okay, so Thank what you. I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to you, and then from you, I'm going to scan your apartment. Okay. And we'll just go through it and see where the mold is. Did, remind me, when we talked before, did you have a leak from somebody above you? Did you tell me? Um, Am I remembering yes, that? Yes, twice there's been... Um, Yes, water leaks from above and the apartment. Yes, so a water leak from above and a water leak on the side um, twice, maybe three times there's been water leaks in the apartment. And since I live on the beach. Yeah, since I've lived here, yes. Um, I don't have any carpet. They changed everything to tile floors, which is great. Um, and But I do live two blocks from the beach, so it's, you know, it's just yeah. humid. and Right. And right. it's an old Port- building. It's probably built in the 50s. 
Poor baby. She lives two yeah. blocks from the beach. I know. Poor me. And I do notice that, there, I mean, there's lots of dust. I leave my windows open because it's so beautiful. I get lots of dust. And um, I do know in the bathroom, it, it could get mildew really easily just because it's damp and, you know, it's a little enclosed. So, mm-hmm. okay. All right. And tell everybody what your symptoms are from having mold. Okay. Exposure. Yeah. So for years, I have been very fatigued and uh, it's gotten, it, you know, sometimes it's better and sometimes it's worse, but I would... I used to have fatigue so much, um, like dragging, like really hard to get out of bed. And, um, and then I had depression, a major depression in the last year, which I've never had in my life. Um, I'm also 47, so I'm going through hormonal changes as well. Um, but, um, I also have inner ear itching for like over 10 years that no one has been able to help me with that. It's just a constant itch until I put like a little steroid cream in there. And then I have some joint problems of like my knees are starting to get sticky and I had a um, surgery in my big toe joint that was from inflammation that um, you had pinpointed was from the mold. So, and and then I also have shoulder, a shoulder, I had um, rotator cuff tears as well. So just, just like inflammation in the body. And for so many years, I have not known where it's coming from because I eat really clean and you know, I work out, like I'm super healthy. So it's just like, what, where is this inflammation coming from? And that's what you pinpointed in our private session was it's, it's from the mold. Right. Cause we saw mold in your body, right? Yeah. Yeah. You pulled out some really old mold. Mm-hmm. And, and then you said there was some newer lighter, like it, it wasn't as drastic, but there was definitely some lighter mold too. Newer. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to you. Okay energetically, and then we'll go into your house. And how I do that, everybody, especially those of you who are first-time listeners, is I raise my vibrational level to the level of spirit. Because when our spirits are attached to a body, we vibrate more slowly just because the body has mass. And so by raising my vibrational level, I can communicate with spirits that are alive, spirits that are dead. I can see buildings. It's called non-local reality. I can be in different places all at the same time. So that's what I'm going to do. I turn my abilities on and off at will. And uh, so it takes me a nanosecond to turn my, as my son calls them, my spidey powers. Or, what, no, spidey, what do they call them? <laughs> spidey senses? What's Spider-Man? <laughs> Mm-hmm. So, here we go. Okay, Liz Boobs heading out to you in Santa Monica. Got you. All right. So, let's just go through your apartment. We're walking in the front door. So, are you on ground level? Yes, I'm on ground level. Okay. That's what it looks like. All right. So, I'm walking in the front door. So, it's it smells mildewy to me just walking in the front door energetically. Hmm. Is that right? I mean, it smells... Um, no. no, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't smell mildewy. It no, it doesn't. Okay, I'm picking it up, but I'm super sensitive yeah. to that. Yeah, I'm like the canary in the coal mine when it comes really? to mold. I can tell in an instant when I walk in a room or a building. Okay, so I'm walking in. What's straight back? Do you have like a a sliding glass door or something that goes out the back? Um. So straight back, so when you walk in, and if I were to walk straight back, it goes basically straight back is straight into the bathroom, and the bathroom has, it's, it's a sliding window. Gotcha. All right. And it's old, and that's where, like, mildew shows up for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think you've got mildew, but do you have tile in that bathroom on the wall? Yeah, there's tile in the walls. Yeah. I think there's, there's mildew behind there. Okay. So when I come out of there, and what's on the floor? Linoleum? Uh, it's tile on the floor of the bathroom. Okay. And then the cabinets have been there for a while? No, the cabinets are new because when, when I had the water damage, they, when, I, then when the water damage happened, they had to redo the bathroom. So that's when they put the tile up, and then they put in new um, fixtures in the bathroom. Okay. Put the tile in your shower and also on the floor? Yes. Yes. No, it was already on the floor, but they put it in the shower. Okay. All right. I think you've got some mold growing behind the tile in the shower. So is it a tub and then you have a shower curtain with it? Yes. Yes. Okay. 
you're going to laugh at me when I say this, get a portable fan and an extension cord and plug it in. And when you get out of the shower, when you leave during the day, just let the fan blow in it to dry it out really good. Okay. Okay. And that, that will help a lot. Yeah. That makes, I mean, I, that makes total sense because we've talked about this with my landlord because I don't own it, that, um, that, that we know they, they've known we need an exhaust in there because that's where the, because it's, there's just been this, all this water damage and they haven't put it in. So, so that makes sense, like to put a fan up and just let it all blow out. Yeah. And those exhaust fans, they, they're not that great. You know, mm, they okay. sound good and they, and they'll help some, but I, I would just get a portable fan and I would okay. just let it blow in there and let it blow okay. everything around. I have a ceiling fan in our master bathroom. And when I get out of the shower and, you know, after I'm dried off and stuff and I, when I'm standing at my vanity, putting my makeup on and doing my hair and stuff, I let the ceiling fan blow and I leave the shower door open. And then when I'm done getting all beautified, then I shut the shower door. And that makes a huge difference. Mm, and okay. in, our, in our showers, you know, three-sided glass, it's kind of at an angle. So mm-hmm. um, it's not really, yes, yeah, it's, it's kind of at an angle but the you know the where the shower door is is flat and then it's got two sides from that that's all glass yeah. so I would consider that um, check your sh- your shower curtain because okay. shower curtains can get moldy and it's usually the liner that's in there so check that yeah you, you yeah and I don't know how to tell I mean it's always mildewy you know but I don't know what's I mean it, you know I don't know what's the difference you know I don't know how to tell the difference between what's mildew and mold because it's always going to be mildewy thing. just because oh it's the same thing yeah it's the same oh. thing yeah. oh okay yeah okay so, yeah well it definitely has mildew on it right now then I'll get a new one okay because it's plastic one. so it I mean I never right. had to know how to do that because it always gets mildewy pretty easily right right so I I would do that and um and then there's that spray I think I sent you the link yeah, to it I, I already bought it I already bought it I have it great Great. It, for, for those of you listening, it's called Home Biotic, and you can get it on Amazon or you can get it at bulletproof.com. And it's a, a non-toxic, non-scented, uh, it doesn't have any fragrance, and it's clear, and it has bacteria in it that eats the mold. So I, w- I would consider yeah. spraying that on your shower curtain when you get out of the shower. And I think okay. that'll oh, help. each time? Okay. Yeah. I'll get a new would, one and then and then just she sprayed on yeah. there each time. Yeah, okay. I would do that. I think that's where the majority of the mold is. The other place that I'm seeing it is is I'm seeing it above the ceiling, on that side where the you know where the so as I'm coming in the front and I'm going straight to the back. What's on the left side? Um, well, if you go if I walk in and go straight back to the left is a guest room. And so it's, it's, um, so, I mean, our apartments are small, so, I mean, it's just two bedroom, it's just a small two bedroom. So you go straight to the back, there's guest room on the left, my room's on the right, and the bathroom's in the middle. Okay. Okay. And then what's coming forward from there on the left? Um, on the left hand side. So, so if you were to not go all the way, so if you walked in the front door and you were not going to the, all the way to the back, in the in the front room is just the living room, and then on the very left side, just a few steps over, is the kitchen. Okay. All right. There's mold on the left side of your house. So if I divided your house in half, you know, the right side and the left side, there's mold in the ceiling on the left side. Oh, okay. So where was the water leak on the left side? Wasn't it? it wasn't there, though. It was no. It wasn't. It wasn't anywhere near there. Okay. That's We've never had any issues. No, I've never had anything in the kitchen or that guest room. I mean, it wasn't on that left side. It was always the water issues were um, by the bathroom. And then, then so two, two water issues in the bathroom. And then the only other one was on the, on, in my room, which is on the right-hand side that backs up to um, the neighbor's bathroom. And their, their bathroom was leaking into my bedroom wall. Yeah. And did they take the drywall out and redo it? Yeah, every time they do, they take they take the drywall off and they let it dry. They bring the big fans on and, you know, let it dry for like a week and then they redo it. So they've okay. done that every time. Okay. All right. I think your room's okay. So I think it's primarily in your bathroom is where the problem is. Okay. But those mold spores are getting throughout the apartment. 
So I hope that helps. Yeah. So with the one in the ceiling, and if so, if it's in the ceiling in the left hand side, and then also behind the tile, you know, like I, I mean, is there anything I can do for that? Or I think if you if you spray that home biotic spray, run that fan in your bathroom, it's going to make a big difference. Okay. Yeah. So I hope that helps. And yeah. I'm going to need to run so to get to some other callers. But thanks so yeah, much for, sure. for Thank for you calling so much. In. Yes. You yeah. Sure. I'm so glad to be here. Take Thank care. you, Lee. Okay. okay thanks. Bye. Bye bye. Okay. Let's see who else we have. I believe our next caller is LaShonda. Hi, LaShonda. Hi, Julie. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Pretty good. Can't complain. Doing well. Please tell everybody where you're calling from. West Palm Beach, Florida. West Palm. What's happening down there? Nothing much. Beautiful weather. Gotta tell yeah. you. Good. Yeah. We're, we're talking sea to shining sea tonight, girl. We go from <laughs> California to Florida. Yeah. 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 The left coast to the right coast, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, good. Do you have a question for me this evening? Okay, sure. Um, I want, I guess, to ask about my, um, I, sounds weird, my epiglottis. For some reason, I tend to think that I'm always swallowing something down the wrong way. And I always think that that. You know, a little flap is always opening at the most weird times. Huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. So explain what an epiglottis is to everybody. It's the little flap of cartilage that uh, covers your um, windpipe. Okay. And you just feel like you're, you're, when you swallow, it's just kind of going down the wrong pipe kind of thing? Sometimes. Sometimes, yes, sometimes I think that or or I haven't even swallowed yet. And I think, you know, while I'm in the process of chewing something, you know, go in there like it opened or something. Or, um, you know, just having a conversation sometimes. You know, we, we're always swallowing from time to time. I'll just feel like maybe saliva went down sometimes. It's just really weird. Mm-hmm. From time to time it happens. Do you notice that it's more pronounced with certain food that you eat, LaShonda, than other times? No, I've never really paid attention to that, no. Okay. Because right. sometimes it happens when I'm not eating. So, like I said, sometimes saliva might go down that way. Okay. Like, oh. Okay. Well, let me get you on my radar and let me take a look at it. Let me take a look at your throat and see what it looks like. So, here comes my laser beam from Alabama heading south. To you in West Palm, got you. Shoot energy from your feet up through the top of your head. Okay, I'm looking at you from behind. Yeah, I think you're right. I think there's a little bit of something, something going on because what I'm watching happen is I'm watching like a little laser procedure happening, almost like it's getting trimmed, um, which is interesting because I would think it would be the opposite of that, that it would be uh, bigger, but I'm. And then I'm watching like a little flat close. Uh, I'm getting that it, it is it is kind of an allergic thing to something that you're eating. So let me see if I can get a read on what it is. That's, so are you eating anything with peanuts in it? Not very often. Um, I don't eat peanuts very often. Okay, peanut Not- butter. Anything with peanuts? Like not very often. No, not very often. Not very often at all. Peanuts aren't my favorite. I don't dislike them. I just don't eat them often. Okay. How about other kinds of nuts? Not very often unless they happen to be in some food or something. But uh, I seldom ever eat peanut butter or, you know, nut butters or what have you. I'm getting nuts. I'm getting peanuts. So, hmm. again, there may, there may be peanut oil used in something you're eating or something. Or or sometimes you'll see foods that will say um, peanuts and other nuts used in this manufacturing plant. Yes. So, that's what I'm getting. I'm getting it's an allergic reaction to something that you're eating. So, um, 
Right now I'm getting peanuts, but we can talk more about it another time. Okay. As far as other things. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're going to be just fine. Okay. But, Thank you. But just kind of be, be cognizant of peanuts and peanut butter and stuff made in factories that where peanuts are used and all of that. Okay. 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 All right. Thank Thanks for calling. Yes, absolutely. My pleasure. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. All righty. Let's see who's next. I believe it's Miss Patty. Hi, Patty. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you, girl? I'm fine. How's everything with you? It's fab. Just fab. How are things up with up there? I know where you're from. Tell everybody. I'm from Queens, New York. Yeah. What's happening up there? Nothing much. My family is expecting a new addition. Oh, oh, fabulous! Yeah, Wonderful. my cousin, my cousin is about to be a father for the first time at the age of forty-eight. Fabulous! Yeah, forty-eight, right? And my grand, and my aunt, my blood aunt, my father's sister, is going to be a grandmother for the first time at the age of eighty-two. Oh my gosh! <laughs> my, oh wait a minute, my my mother became a, a grandmother for the first time at the age of eighty-three. Oh my gosh! Wow. Okay, so okay. So this is my question. I want to. I yeah. want to go on vac. Okay, I want to go on vacation. And right now, the baby is expecting around the 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 due date is the day after Christmas. Uh-huh. And it's like right now, I'm debating when to go on vacation. So I'm just is like wondering where the baby. I live in Queens, New York. My cousin lives up in Westchester County in White Plains area, which is mm-hmm. just an hour, uh, hour, 15 minute drive from my house. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now we're wondering, I'm wondering, it's like seven more weeks until the baby is expected. Um, like, what do you see? Will the baby be born early? Will the baby be born on Christmas? It's like, you know, the baby's born. I might be going up there to see the baby, but I'm, I'm trying to not go on, be on vacation when that happens. Because when my niece was born, my niece was born the day before I went on vacation. And <laughs> we were going over to my brother's house three or four times while I was on vacation. And mm-hmm. this vacation, I need to do some stuff. And I just want to make sure, you know, let mm-hmm. me see the baby about two times and then let me go do what I need to do. I get that it's in your best interest to take your vacation later in January. Okay, you, you don't see the baby. you don't want it to interfere at all. Right. All right. I think I think the baby's going to come or it's going to come around that time. I keep telling my cousin because he owns a restaurant. I say, "Oh boy, it would be wonderful if it's a New Year's baby and then, you know, it'll be what will it be a New Year's baby?" I think it'll be born before New Year's, but I got to tell you, Patty, so many of these moms are, you know, they're being induced <laughs> so that so that the baby's born when it's convenient. And with it being right around Christmas right now, I'm getting that the baby's going to be born after Christmas, but before New Year's. So I think that week in between. Now, that's at this moment in time that can change because, right. you know, with right. future events, there are a million variables that come into play. And, uh, yeah, I know. So, yeah, yeah. So I, I think know. that's like, like I'm just saying when to go on vacation. So it's like, you know, yeah. I want to, yeah, I want to, you know, it's like a, I was thinking about going on vacation the Saturday after New Year's, like the first Saturday. So I think I'm, I might be safe around that time. I think, I think if you go mid to late January, you'll be great. Okay. All yeah. right. So the baby will be okay. born like. The baby's expected a day after Christmas, so you think the baby's right. going to be born later? I think the baby, right now, there's a good chance the baby will be born the week between Christmas and New Year's. All right. That's when the baby's expected anyway. So, yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. All right. But I just want the baby to be healthy. That's all I want. That's I want the right. baby to be healthy. That's right. Well, thanks for calling. All right. Take Bye-bye. Care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, let's see who our next caller is. I believe it's Glenda. Hi, Glenda. Hi. Uh, I'm How are Glenda. you? I'm How good. are you, girl? Good. Please tell everybody where you're calling from. I'm calling from Tucson, Arizona. All righty. Well, terrific. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Got a you. question for me? I do. Um, so, for the past 
I don't know, about seven years, I have developed a phobia of driving on the freeways or on highways or basically anywhere above 50 miles an hour. And I used to be very free spirited and I would take road trips all the time. And I feel like I'm handicapped in that, in that way. And I can't help my spouse out with driving on the freeway. And it's become really frustrating because it's also starting to affect my work. Mm -hmm. And I've tried medication. I've tried psychotherapy, hypnotherapy, um, essential oils. I mean, you name it. And I don't know if, if, if there's some other thing that is causing this. Am, am I putting myself in the way? I guess my question is, how can I overcome this? Was there uh, an event that precipitated you feeling like this with driving on a freeway? Were you in an accident or something? Or I wasn't personally in an accident, but a few years before my my phobia developed, a friend of my sister's passed away in an accident, and because I used to work um, in the medical examiner's office, I had to order a copy for their parents of the autopsy, and that really affected me. Um, oh, I bet. <laughs> but other than that, I've never witnessed an accident. I've never been in an accident, thankfully. Um, that, that would be the only event that I can say may have contributed. Okay. Let's, um, is it, do you think that it's worth checking out to see if there's a past life connection? with this? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. All right. Here's how how I do past life stuff, Glenda. I imagine walking down this endless hallway with really narrow walls, and it has very tall ceilings, like 30, 40 foot tall ceilings. And on the walls are 12 inch by 12 inch square mirrors. And each mirror represents a different lifetime. And so we're going to imagine, I'm going to imagine myself walking down this hallway, and this is, this is, these all represent lifetimes of yours. And we'll ask a question, are there any lifetimes that uh, correlate with Glenda's phobia of wanting to drive on highways? And the ones that have a, a, a connection will come out from the wall almost as if they're on a hydraulic arm. And then I'll say, show me the one that, that correlates the most. That one will come out. I'll envision myself walking into it, and I'll be shown some kind of a scene, and then we'll, we'll go from there, okay, mm-hmm. and figure out, figure out what's happening. So here we go. Here, come, here I am walking down. My eyes are closed. I'm envisioning myself walking down this hallway. Okay, are there any of uh, Glenda's past lives that are having an effect in this current life on her phobia or her fear of driving on highways and driving at fast speeds. Okay, there's bunches of them, bunches of them that are coming out. All right, so show me the one that correlates the most. Okay, it's pretty far down on the left, Glenda. So I'm in front of it. I'm going into it. So I'm walking into it. Okay, well, you're going to laugh when I tell you this. In 1947, you were a fighter pilot for the RAF. RAF is the Royal Air Force, which was the, you know, in England, the Brit. Right. Okay. So what happened with this? You were born and raised in Chelsea. Hmm. Your, Your name was Robert in that lifetime. So... Okay, you made an emergency landing in one of those airplanes, and you landed on a road going really fast, and and your plane slammed into something because you couldn't stop enough, and you didn't make it. Okay, so that's where this phobia, I think, is partially coming from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove that past life memory from your system, 
And past lives have an effect on us because the memory stays in our DNA, Glenda. We mm-hmm. aren't necessarily cognizant of past life memories uh, after about the age of six or so because our filters start to mature enough that we don't remember things. Little kids remember things from past lives. And there are yeah. countless stories about little kids saying, well, you know, you're my favorite mommy. <laughs> and the mom's going, I'm your only mommy. So they go, no, mom, here's how it works. And so anyways, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push that past life memory out of your system. And it comes out of your pores and it looks like blue vapor to me. <laughs> it's like, mm-hmm. I laugh, I say, you know those commercials at Christmas time and we're getting into the holidays for Chia Pets? You know, ch 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 <laughs> instead of having bean sprouts growing out of your little pores, you've got blue vapor coming out of your pores. And so I make several passes through it. I know my visuals are hilarious at times. I don't know where I came up with that chia pet thing, but okay. So one more pass. All right. Now there's sparkly energy that comes in and that fills in this space where that past life energy is. The reason we don't remember our past lives is because we want to have the experience of this lifetime. And we build on all of our past lives, but we're not mm-hmm. cognizant of what's happened in our past lives necessarily. So mm-hmm. see if that makes a difference for you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. When you the, other thing, the other thing I'm getting is get in the car and um, just try different speeds on a road that's not very heavily traveled. Mm-hmm. So kind of kind of work up to it. So go, you know, what's comfortable and then speed it up a little bit. You can always bring it back down. And then when you feel comfortable, maybe at five miles over where you did before, then then up at another five miles. When you start feeling panicky, stop. Go back to where you're comfortable. And then next time you go out, bring it up a little bit further. Kind of like when you're recovering from being sick or a surgery and you walk a little farther each day. Right. I think. I think try that. I think this is going to make a difference for you. So let me know what, let me know what you experience. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. You bet. Thanks for calling. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. Let's see who else we have. We've got a caller from the 310 area code. Hi, this is Julie. Who's this? Is this me, Sherry? Hi, Sherry. How are you? Hi. I'm okay. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Please tell everybody where you're calling from. I'm actually uh, from L.A., but I'm in San Francisco right now. So I'm calling you from San Francisco. Oh, terrific. Yeah, it's a lovely, lovely day here today. Well, good. Um, I I had a private session with you recently, and I am just experiencing some, I'm still experiencing some really bad, strange pain in my stomach it's like almost not even my stomach it's like up under my ribs on my Mm -hmm. right side and it's so hard it almost feels like a mask to me and I'm concerned about it so I thought I'd call in and see if you if you could tell me any more about why it's this is occurring what did we come up with last time Sherry well um I, I'm having like swelling in my feet and my legs and that mm-hmm. you, you, you saw um, old, old mold, but also yeast, um, mm-hmm. candida. And I'm taking niastat, mm-hmm. um, niastat. tablets, niastat mm-hmm. tablets for that. Um, and, and I'm taking the olive leaf extract because I'm like, I've got to get rid of this. I can't stand it anymore. Um, and I feel like I'm having incrementally differences, like not much but a little. Mm-hmm. Um, probably doesn't help that I haven't cut entirely all sugar out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, but I'm getting I'm getting to that. I'm just traveling. It's making it really hard. But mm-hmm. my stomach, it's like this. It's like my stomach is um, definitely fat, but I also have this. Like it feels so hard. And it's painful on where it feels hard. It's almost sore. Okay. All right. Let me get you on my radar and see. When you first start on my statin, it can kill off, it'll kill off the yeast, mm-hmm. which that's what we want it to do. And the yeast release their toxins into the GI tract and also into the bloodstream. So sometimes you can feel 
worse for a few days when you're just getting okay. started. But if you hang in there, it'll get better. But let me check this okay. um, part. And you said it's on the right side under your ribs? Well, well it, it, both sides, but especially bad on the right. And I actually was having this before I started the niastatin. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think it's bloating. I really do. I think it's bloating from from the yeast and from, if you can yeah. stay off of everything processed, try that for a few days, right. like okay. anything white, sugar, flour, you know, anything. Right. If it's whole food, eat it. If it's processed food, stay away from it. Just try that for a few days and see if okay. that makes a difference. I, I'm just seeing yeast. Like, um, okay. how, you know, I know you've seen if you have milk and you shake it in the, in the, uh, cart, in the jug, you know, the yeah. plastic jug that they come in those gallon containers. You can see the bubbles up at the top that come. Right. That's what your stomach looks like. Yeah, and I do so, notice that it feels a little bit better in the morning, and then as the day goes by and I eat a meal, it feels worse. Yeah. It gets so, harder. Lots of water. So that's just okay. bloating from the bubbles. So lots of water. Okay. You know, if you're going to eat fruit, peel it. Try and no, eat whole no. food stuff. Okay. You know, that kind of all stuff. Right. Stay away from the sugar and anything processed. That's all that I see going on. You're going you're to be right. a lot better. Stay on it. Okay. okay, I will. Thanks Thank for you so much. All right, have All right, fun up there. You Thank too. you. Bye-bye. We do this show every Thursday night at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, and 5 Pacific. The call-in number is 712-770-4160, and the access code is 533-677-POUND. You can find this information a bunch of different places. On my website, AskJulieRyan.com, it's on the home page. You can also find it anywhere you download podcasts. It's in the show notes and also on YouTube in the show notes. When you're on my site, sign up for my blog, and it's a question that somebody has submitted online, and I'll answer it. And in the show notes or in the email notes are the show in, are the show notes the show, is the show information and when you're on my site sign up for a um, session and then we'll have a whole hour to discuss whatever you want to talk about since I'm a businesswoman that learned how to do woo woo and I'm a buffet of psychicness we can talk to your deceased loved ones I can do a medical scan on you we can communicate with your pets I can scan them we can do like what we did with our first caller uh, I can scan buildings for you. We can do past life stuff. We can talk about spirit guides. I can tell how close to death somebody is if you have a loved one who you think might be dying. So um, whatever you want to talk about over that hour, it makes it really interesting. And it's usually a lot of fun. We usually have a lot of fun during that hour. Here's the question that was submitted this week. And it comes from a gal named Kat. And Kat lives in Spain. And she said, hi, Julie. Tuned into Dr. Northrup's show on Hay House Radio for the first time today and was fascinated by your interview. Can you please psychically tune in to both me and our house here in Ibiza? And I think they pronounce it Ibiza, but it looks like Ibiza with a Z to me. So I'm probably butchering it. But I had a, she went on to say, I had a wonderful pregnancy, and although a planned home water birth ended up being a day at the hospital with an emergency C-section, my physical slash emotional response to this disappointment has lasted two years. I don't believe this to be simply postnatal depression or fallout from the postpartum thyroiditis or adrenal fatigue I experienced. There's more to it. But even as a Reiki master, I can't get to the bottom of it, nor has anyone else been able to. I'd be deeply appreciative of your assistance. Thanks, Kat. And here's my response. Hi, Kat. Thanks for your question and for your kind words about my interview with Dr. Northrup. By the way, she's fabulous, you guys. If you have the opportunity to check her out, it's drnorthrup.com, N-O-R-T-H-R-U-P. She, I've been following her gosh, for 30 years. She taught me so much. And it was such an honor for me to be on her show. I went on to say, in order to get some information for you, I did a medical scan and energetically connected to you in Spain. 
Once I got a picture of you in my mind's eye, I was able to see, again in my mind's eye, that you were very low in estrogen. You look like a woman in menopause. To help you feel better, I added energetic estrogen to your body, and you immediately responded and looked healthy. When I see a woman that looks like they're in menopause, their energy field to me looks like a raisin with all those crinkles on a raisin. And then when I shoot energetic estrogen into them, that raisin plumps up and those wrinkle, those crinkles and wrinkles go away. Kind of like if you soak your raisin in boiling hot water before you put it in a recipe for oatmeal raisin cookies. That's how I can tell when a woman is, is low in estrogen. I went on to say, since having a baby and being in menopause at the same time didn't make sense to me, I thought this is an immaculate birth here. I decided to call Christine Paletti, MD, MS, FACOG, which is fellow of the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, my personal OBGYN, who now specializes in bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, which is also known as BHRT, for her thoughts about what I was seeing with regard to your situation. Dr. Paletti, who's been an OBGYN for many decades, said, Quote, during breastfeeding, women's hormones are negligible, meaning their sex hormones, their estrogen, their progesterone, their testosterone. She went on to say, quote, the new mother's body produces prolactin, a hormone enabling females to produce breast milk, which causes a major decrease in estrogen and that also adrenal fatigue makes all hormone levels decrease, end quote. In addition, Dr. Paletti said she's seen with her patients that, quote, Having a baby later in life, she's talking about late 30s, early 40s, and older, can contribute to an earlier onset of menopause, end quote. I had never heard that before, and, and so I asked her about that. I said, what? And I said, is that, can I find more information on that? And she said, I don't know that there's a lot out there, but she said, after 40 years of delivering babies and working with pregnant moms, she said, I've just seen it in my practice over and over and over again. I thought that was really interesting. So it may be out there, but I haven't taken the time to Google it. Based on what I saw when scanning you combined with this information from Dr. Paletti, I believe you're in need of hormones. It seems as if you're being affected by postnatal and menopausal conditions all at the same time. Having said all that, my recommendation is to eat a whole foods diet, and I put in parentheses, if God made it, eat it. If man made it, avoid it. Get as much sleep as possible and find a physician to help you with BHRT. That's the bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. That's what that stands for. And you can find a physician at at A4M, the letter A, number four, letter M, dot com. And that's the um, American Association of Anti-Aging Medicine. You can find a physician there. I know all of this sounds easier said than done. However, right now, your priority needs to be you and your baby so you can feel well again. Hope this information helps. So I learned a lot from my physician on that one, and I hope that helps you too, Kat. Okay, let's go back to the phones and see who else we have. I believe our next caller, Susie. Hi, Suze. Thank you, Julie. Thanks for taking my call. How are you? I'm great, thanks. I just um, wanted to say I, I did last week time I got to speak with you. I, you said that you um, got a um, yes on me getting an AFO brace. So I got that. It just arrived in the mail today, so I'll be wearing that on my right ankle. And I realized that before I have surgery scheduled on that temporarily or tentatively for December 13th and by the 26th I have to, um, you know, either go to the pre-op or not. And I know that I would love to cancel this surgery and I thought I'd just check with you. I know in the past you've thought that I did not, that I'd be able to, the, the tear in the tendon would heal enough or, you know, the inflammation would go down enough so that I would not have to have surgery and I can cancel that and let someone else take that spot. And I just thought I'd check with you today and see if you can see how it looks and send some of your healing energy because it always feels so much better. I do feel like it's getting better and uh, I'm seeing improvement times when there's no pain at all, like Saturday. So that was awesome. And so Wonderful. I'm Wonderful. calling from the San Francisco Bay Area. Okay. Terrific. Okay. Let me get you on your, get you on my radar and see what's going Thank on. You. See how it looks this week. So here we go. Laser beams heading back out to the left coast. Got you. Okay. It's healing, Sue. It's healing. Yes. 
Yeah, it's healing. So I think play it by ear. Wear that brace mm-hmm. and play it by ear. And, you know, don't be a little wild child kamikaze girl out there, right. you know, and, and just, just lay low with the okay. holidays coming. You know, let people wait on you. <laughs> yeah, that'd <I> be nice. <laughs> if you're said and done, right? Yeah. No, yes. I think that's good that you have those scheduled. And then, and then let's look at it again. You'll know what the right thing is to do. Thank you. And, you know, a friend of mine sent me something today saying she's at um, John of God in Brazil, and she said that she could have him look at my picture. And, and if I agree to drink no alcohol and take passion flower pill herbs for uh, two months, that, you know, there can be a healing. Do you, does you see that's okay This in my best interest? Oh, yeah. I felt like I wanted to try it. Oh, I yeah. never heard of passion flower herbs or pills. Yeah, but Absolutely. I know other people that have been there, and they've had just miraculous Thanks. Oh, good. Well, I'm excited about that, too, then. Well, thank you so much. Bless you. And I think I think you have to wear white or something when you're doing no, that, they didn't, right? No, she didn't tell me that, but she said just I needed for, yeah, for two months, no alcohol and no um, and no pepper, no black pepper and uh, hot pepper. So I'm good with that. <laughs> so. Hey, so you'll have to be a teetotaler over the holidays. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fine. So thank you that'll so much. Fine. You're welcome. Keep healing, okay. Sue. Thanks okay, for yeah, calling. thanks for sending your healing energy. It's always so great. Thank you, you bet. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I believe our next caller is Musa. Hi, Musa. Hey, Julie. How are you, sir? How are you today? I'm well. How are you? I am doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. Terrific. Please tell everybody where you're calling from. Uh, today I'm calling from Connecticut. Okay. Great. We're, we're having everybody on the coast. This is so funny. I don't think we've had anybody that hasn't been on a coast tonight. I don't. What's, what's up with that? Everybody's been well. Arizona. Okay, that was it. Everybody else is from the coast. That's great. Okay, <laughs> what's happening with you? How may I help you, sir? Uh, well, lately I've been having some knee knee pain, Uh-oh. both right and left knee. I wanted to get it checked out. Get your opinion yeah. on it. Yeah, your right knee is more inflamed than your left knee, isn't it? It hurts more. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Well, right knee. You got, yeah, you got more inflammation in your right knee. I hooked into you already when you got on the when you got on the line. Just for awesome. time's sake. Okay. All right. I'm looking at you from behind. Okay. So I'm seeing a little bit of a cartilage thing going on in your right knee. So I'm watching stem cell energy get injected between the joint there to give you some more cartilage, some more padding, and then it'll centrifuge. Stem cell energy, Musa, looks to me like clear gel and it has sparkles in it. Anything that's a healing energy that I see always has sparkles in it, which I think is just fabulous. I don't know if that's just Mm. me or if it really has sparkles in it, but it does. And then once it gets put into a, a body part, it centrifuges and that turns it into bone or cartilage or brain matter or heart tissue or whatever is needed. So it's centrifuging right now. That's going to give you more cartilage. Let me see the left. A little bit on the left. The left one looks like you need a chiropractic adjustment on that one. It's not as inflamed on the left one. Yeah, I would go see a chiropractor on both of them. I think you can use an adjustment, but the left one's just out of line. That's what's going on with that. So yeah, I'm not seeing any. Don't... I'm not seeing any meniscal tears. I think it's Good. just uh, the left one's out of whack. The right one, you got a little bit of cartilage thing going on, but you should have more padding in there after after I'm done with you here this evening. Right on. <laughs> Thank you so much, Julie. You're most welcome. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Have a good night. You bet. Take care. You too. Okay. And then I believe our next caller is Natalicia. Hi, Natalicia. Hey, Julie. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Okay, thanks. I don't have any questions. I always like to listen in. So. Oh, good. Okay, but tell everybody where you're calling from. Oh, uh, I'm calling from Hilton Head, South Carolina. Oh, that's what I'm saying. It's another coast. Isn't that hysterical? Uh, you know. What's up with that tonight? Gosh. Yeah. We're, you know, Arizona and Alabama. So we've got we've got all of our callers calling in from the coast or states that start with A's. 
there's got to be some correlation there. See, if I was a, if I was a astrologist or something, astrologer. Okay. Astrologist. Is that a name? Is that a word? <laughs> I think if I was an astrologer, it would, um, we would be able to come up with some correlation there. Funny <laughs> enough, when I had my 40th birthday, I had nine of my best girlfriends flying from all over the country, Alicia, and we all met in New Orleans for the weekend. Yeah. We had a yeah. blast. It was so much fun. <laughs> and everybody that was there either had a birthday on the same day or had a birthday either a day before or a day after somebody else there. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Yes, Isn't that bizarre? Is. We figured that yeah. out, you know, after <laughs> lot, after probably going through lots of bottles of wine. We, we, all, <laughs> we all figured that out. So. All right. Well, thanks for calling. You know, you can download this show on and anywhere you get podcasts, and you can listen to it any time. But I love when you call in each week. Yes, <laughs> or when you can. Thank you. When you can. Okay. Well, yeah. have a good week. Thank you, Judy. Same okay. to you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, that's it for our callers this evening. Remember to follow me on Instagram at Ask Julie Ryan. Write a review about why you like the podcast on iTunes and Ask Julie Ryan. Go to iTunes.com slash Ask Julie Ryan and subscribe to my blog at AskJulieRyan.com and you will be submitted into a drawing for a free one-hour session valued at $155. So that will be fun. And we announce the winner on the first Thursday of every month. And we've had several winners so far each month. And the reason I do that, everybody, is because I so appreciate you all listening. And I really appreciate the people that take the time to call in to the show and ask their questions. And I know 155 bucks is a lot of money to people, especially going into the holidays. So, um, you know, sign up for the drawing. You may win. And that's why I do the show, too, so people can call in and it's free and then get their questions answered. With that, I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and a good part of next week. And please call in next week, submit your questions online. And until next time, take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to follow Julie on Twitter at Ask Julie Ryan and like her on Facebook at Ask Julie Ryan. For information on how you can ask Julie your question, please visit AskJulieRyan.com.